Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and we're going to talk about Yagis today. Uh, the question is motivated by uh, a uh, email from Calvin N7AY, who's working with Yagis. Now, the question is let's look at your classic Yagi. This is the old A3S by Kush. Craft, is it? Okay. It looks like this. They are equidistant and there's a metal boom running the length of it. Now, the center element is the what's called the driver and this element is shorter. It's the reflector. I'm sorry. That's wrong. Obviously. It's shorter so it's the director. And this element is a little bit longer and is the reflector. This is sometimes called the driven element. And the direction of propagation is that way. Now, in your classic Yagi, the spacing is even. The reason for this is traditional. I mean, it goes back to the original Yagis where the spacing was even. A lot of computer work, working with simulations of near-field components and so on, has shown that a different spacing is more or closer to optimum as opposed to this spacing like that. But you still see a lot of antennas that way. Now, here are some questions. First of all, the driver. A driver is basically a dipole, so you've got to break that in half somehow and put half the coax to the one, half the coax to the other, or a ballon or something like that. The A3S was, nobody bothered with the ballon. There is a special kind of uh, ballon, hairpin ballon, where you bring up the one, connect it to the center connector, uh, connect the other one here, and put a loop in right here. That's called a hairpin. And that's one way of feeding it. And that way you can uh, avoid the, the ballon. There's another way of doing it called a gamma match, um, where you've got... Um, this thing like this and you bring up and connect the the ground to here and then you have a rod going out here with a capacitive sleeve on it and that capacitive sleeve connects to this. This is definitely balanced to unbalanced. This is a uh, gamma match. Okay. Now, so that's the first question. If you drive it with a gamma match, you can have one single pole all the way through. So a lot of people like to do that because it's easier in construction to attach a pole here. If this is the end of the pole, you've got to hold that perfectly steady, where it's a lot easier to connect a pole that's the whole pole. You're just balancing it over the middle point. Okay. Now, uh, the old A3S has traps on it, so you can use it. this part for 10, this part for uh, 15, this part for uh, 20 meters. It's not really practical for most people to have a 40 meter beam. Uh, you need some serious structure in place to do that. Now, the question at hand had to do with the boom. This thing right here is called the boom. And the mast is what goes down to ground. Okay. Um, the boom in the traditional is metal. 
and traditionally it actually connects to the uh, reflector and the director and if it's a gamma match driven it'd be connected to that too the um, I'm talking about the uh, yeah be metal all the way through the whole thing would be metal now um, there are some designs which will insulate the element this is an element all three of these are elements okay we've got element 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 this element is could be um, held off insulated from the boom some people think that's a good idea similarly here if you're going to feed the two halves separately you're going to need to have to have something here that will give mechanical strength to these two big arms waving in the wind out here okay and this is often um, insulated from the mast or the boom and the director again can be insulated if you want to what does insulating it from the mast do for you well first it gives you the satisfaction and the ability to sleep at night knowing that it is separated from the mast does it make any difference in the performance of the antenna not much why because this is perpendicular to the direction of radiation and does not get involved much with the radiation pattern it's perpendicular to it okay orthogonal is a better word that we use now if you're going to insulate it you got a piece of metal here now if you were to model this you could model these as pieces of metal or wire and you can see whether they will carry current whether they will radiate how they will affect the pattern and so on and so forth you're going to have more effect by moving the director i'm sorry the driver the driven element moving that back and having that director out a little bit further in other words getting a modern spacing on these elements now people use metal for the boom for strength you don't have to you could put up a big hairy chunk of fiberglass up there if you wanted to carbon fiber whatever and they are truly insulated but i don't think that's going to gain you much you can try it you can certainly try it but it is the rage now to insulate the reflector from the boom and the driver and the director from the boom to insulate them it is also all the rage today to get this spacing straightened out uh, on a three element i mean the key thing to do is just move the driver back a little ways and you want to model it to make sure it gets uh, the correct uh, amount back you also want to use a match that uh, allows you to um, feed the thing with unbalanced line and get an, a balanced antenna that means a gamma match of some sort okay a hairpin match is, is a balanced to balanced and you can uh, imbalance impedances that way okay now this being a dipole the driver being a dipole is going to have somewhere between 30 and 70 ohms somewhere in there so you're going to end up using a tuner anyway or the hairpin match helps tune that so that it's at 50 ohms do you detect here that you're going to be taking that antenna up and down a lot oh yeah same with the gamma match putting an antenna up means getting the thing up physically then taking a bunch of measurements taking it down uh, changing the measurements putting it back up and seeing what you did to it and do more of what works and less of what didn't work okay so what i'm trying to show i have a four element beam from um i think it's diamond antenna it could be arrow because they both make similar products 
it's a two meter beam it's four elements uniformly spaced they are solid aluminum rods that come through an aluminum mast and then it has a gamma match on it it works like a charm works great so which is better I don't know that you're going to get so much difference out of this that except for rare DX or contesting or something like that you might want the latest latest design what will affect the radiation pattern more is putting modern spacing in between those elements okay rather than the traditional evenly spaced Yagis you want a Yagi that is got the proper uh, spacing for in there by the way these things are huge um, if this is a 20 meter it's um, 33 feet from there to there so you can imagine the distance over to here uh, what it is it's got a big turning radius on the thing and one of the reasons you put it on a tower is to get it up above the trees so that you don't have a problem with the thing hitting the trees Okay, and uh, Yagi's, uh, this all works also when you're talking about so-called quaggies, which are uh, quad antennas. They're loops instead of simple radiators. Okay, now what does the element need to be made of? Usually it's metal tubing, and it's strong enough, and it comes in different pieces, so as you go further out, it gets thinner and thinner you know because the less weight that it has to support and the elements are self-supporting can you use wire to do this for example if you want to transmit only in one direction can you build something like this from wire and lift it into the air yes you can um, but uh, it, and it would work but generally these are made with aluminum tubing so I hope that helps uh, answer the question, Calvin, N7AY. And so there you have it. Uh, if you've been watching this far, could you do me a favor and feed the algorithm at YouTube by subscribing and by clicking like and leaving a comment. And um, also, if you'd like to support this channel financially, you can go to decastlercom support. And that shows a whole bunch of different ways that you can do it, uh, including through Patreon. So thank you very much for your time. And until we next meet, 73. <laughs>